What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. So it's time. It's time for me to finally admit this. The Milwaukee Bucks made a mistake not re-signing PJ Tucker. Yep. Yep, they made a mistake not re-signing him, man. I remember last year when free agency came upon us and I saw that he had signed with the Miami Heat. I thought, hmm, okay, well, maybe the Bucks gave him an offer. Maybe he declined it. Uh, maybe he just didn't want to re-sign with the team. Maybe he wanted to go to Miami. Maybe he took less money. He just didn't like the city. Whatever. So, okay. Well, they lost him. Nothing they could do. But then it came out, according to P.J. Tucker, they didn't want to give him what he uh, what he asked for. They, I think the offer was, like, kind of insulted. Like, they feel like he wasn't worth the money that he was requesting. So, Miami gave him an offer. He, he accepted it. And that's on the Bucks, man. That's on the Bucks. And I'm going to tell you what it is. Part of, at least in my opinion. Part of his ingratitude. <laughs> I mean, this guy was guarding KD. Right? This dude was guarding KD. Guarding the opposing team's best uh, post players at times or best offensive players, making life miserable for them. Or even if they were having big games, they had to work really fucking hard to get those buckets. As you saw, KD was fucking exhausted on fumes after game seven. So he was so tired that he momentarily forgot where the hell he was. And much, much of that came from having P.J. Tucker guard him. As short as he is, P.J. Tucker has a low, center of a, a low center of gravity. And he pushes you out of your comfort zone. And, you know what I'm saying, with his physicality, he, he makes it difficult for you to get into the spots that you, you want to get to, where you're comfortable at, and he just makes it harder. He makes it harder, man. I mean, you're not going to stop a great offensive player. But you can make him fucking work for every fucking bucket he's going to get. That's what he was doing. And he was doing that with every fucking body he was guarding. But, you know, plus the fact that he, you know, he's a guy that could hit the corner three. Uh, and now, from watching him this year, he's improved in his passing. And, you know, a lot of other shit, man. He's, he's, he has leadership uh, intangibles and skills that the Bucks sorely miss. You know, and I blame analytics, man. I blame analytics because they so value offensive players. And when I was growing up, I know I'm always going when I growing up, I was growing up. I know that irritates some of you guys, but I'm just sorry, man. When I was old, when I was coming of age, the NBA valued defensive players. You know, every squad had at least one to two supposed lockdown or um, lockdown defenders. Remember, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, NBA players took pride in defense. Everybody said there was a shutdown. That's the influence that a guy like Gary Payton had. That's the influence of a player like the Kim Mutombo had. Everybody wanted to be a great defensive player. Michael Jordan had that influence. Everybody wanted to be a great defensive player. Remember, Ruben Patterson called himself the Kobe stopper. Gerald Wilkins called himself the Jordan stopper. Even if it wasn't true, really, everybody wanted to be a lockdown defender. But Sean Leonard, would fit in great in this era. Rashawn Leonard would fit right in in today's NBA. Miami Heat, great defensive player, made Michael Jordan life very difficult. 
Now, he wouldn't be able to do some of the things he did back then, being physical with Mike and, you know, and shit like that. But he was still a great one-on-one defender, and he could knock down the three. He was shooting the three at, like, something like a 40% clip back then in the, in the late 90s. So I can only imagine what he was shooting today, uncontested. Bashar would probably be a 44% three-point shooter. But anyway, I'm getting off the subject a little bit. Um, P.J. Tucker is something that the Bucks miss, man. Because now, if you notice, Giannis had to always guard the opposing teams or, or, or Lopez, the opposing team's best player. And that shit where Al Horford or uh, Tice or Williams or whatever Again, in that series where everybody, you know, all the motherfuckers kept being open like that because Brooke Lopez was reluctant or too fucking slow to rotate and go out. See, if that was Tucker, that shit wouldn't have happened. So, yeah, the Bucks made a serious mistake not resigning P.J. Tucker, man. And um, another reason I know why they, they didn't resign him was because of his age. He was 36 years old. They say, well, they probably figured, and I figured the same thing, so I'm not going to lie. I said, eh, he probably ain't got but one more good year in him. He's going to fall apart, get injured, whatever. But nope, he's 37, still a very valuable player. Um, has actually improved, I would say, in his decision-making and his passing. Uh, his court awareness is, is at his apex. He's great, man. Um, I'm not saying he's all of fame. We're not saying that. But for what he does, he's great. And he hits timely shots, too. You know, he may not have the highest three-point percentage, but he hits shots when it matters, whether when the team needs a bucket or when the team is going on an important uh, run to kind of discombobulate the opposition. He, he'll hit that three. That's why sometimes these percentages are misleading. Yeah, uh, P.J. Tucker may only shoot 36% from three, but let's look at that, that number in the fourth quarter when his focus goes up, you know, his concentration goes, goes up. And let's see if he's shooting 41% from three in the fourth quarter, right? Let's look at a guy like, say, Joe Harris, who during the regular season is shooting 43%, 47%? Oh, my God. He's, a, you know, it's unbelievable. But then the playoffs in the fourth quarter or in pressure games, he goes to 26%. But anyway, the Bucks fucked up not resigning this guy, man. The guy is 37, still playing at a very high level. Uh, you know, I'm starting to think he's one of these guys that's like, Dennis Rodman, Carl Malone, LeBron James, Moses Malone, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Jeff Stockton. Just one of these guys, Elvin Hayes, that just ages slower than everybody else. And um, John Havlicek, you know, just played a very high level for a very long time. But anyway, I told you guys that. 